Hello, today I'm going to be talking about a bit of a stretch by Chris Atkins. This came out in February of this year, 2020, and I don't usually do proper videos on audiobooks because I think um, I, it's, I don't absorb enough for it to be worthy of me having this many feelings, but I just had a lot of thoughts and feelings about this book, so I decided to make a whole video about it. Chris Atkins is a journalist and documentary filmmaker. Um, he made documentaries for like Channel 4's Dispatches, so like decently renowned kind of dude. Um, and he got into this scheme a few years ago of uh, like slightly dodgy ways of funding his films, which ended up with him being sentenced to five years in prison for uh, fraud. He spent the first nine months of that sentence in HMP Wandsworth, which is like a notoriously uh, horrible like Victorian prison. Um, and this is his kind of diaries from that time and from a little bit after uh, talking about basically what, what he got up to in prison. So there are kind of like two big streams of content in this book. And one is detailing all of the inadequacies of the prison system. He talks about how having a cabinet minister in charge of prisons uh, is really debilitating to making any forward progress because it's really hard to have agreement on long-term decisions about um, the structure of prisons in like a partisan system. He talks specifically about Chris Grayling, who is the Secretary of State for Justice from 2012 to 2015, and how a lot of his policies from his tenure um, affected the way prison was when he got into it. And also talked about Liz Truss, who was the Secretary in 1617 uh, and uh, what she did in her time there. During his time in Wandsworth, Chris trained to be a listener, which is a position of a basically like a peer therapist. Um, so when any prisoner was having like suicidal thoughts or was self-harming, uh, they would be called on to, to have a kind of like one-on-one -on -one therapy session. And the kind of stories he tells about the, the state that a lot of these people are in is, is just awful. The kind of mental health support that exists for these people in prison is terrible. The suicide rate is awful. And there are loads of structural issues like how there are all of these education programs, but they can't actually be used because there aren't enough guards to unlock the prisoners. So most of these prisoners are, maybe not most, but like a lot are like functionally illiterate um, and just can't do anything but return to a life of crime. In this way, it kind of reminds me of this book I read last year, Secret Barrister, uh, which is an anonymous, um, kind of breakdown of what's happened to our legal system in the last couple decades and how it is now just completely not serving what it was set up to, to do. Um, and it's it, like a bit of a stretch, nowhere near as heavy handed as this book. This, this book is just an entire critique on the, on the legal system. Um, but you know, Chris Atkins definitely goes into to the fact that like prisons are the, the last place that any government wants to be seen to be spending money on because they're the worst of the worst. But actually investing money in prisons and in like the education in prisons is how you minimize reoffending, which it costs way more to society than the amount of money it would cost to, to make these prisons function well. So there's that whole stream of the book, like the, the serious stream, um, but that's like overwhelmed by this side of things of uh, just kind of like his humorous, cynical stories of being in prison. So he gets to Wandsworth and his goal is to get out of there as soon as possible. So he wants to be moved into an open prison and to do that you have to have basically done a certain amount of good things and not done a certain amount of bad things. And as a well-educated, white man, um, he knew how to do it. Like he knew that if he got this job of, of dropping off like the slips of visits, um, he could have like unlimited time on the phone to talk to his daughter. He knew that if you like attend church services, you get to leave your cell and go to a nice place for a bit. He knew that if you get in with the other white collar criminals, you can get um, like put onto the best wing and then be in, uh, he gets moved into the best cell um, that's like double the size of any of the other cells. And he just like absolutely nailed prison like he came in with an agenda and he killed it and that's kind of really annoying because you're like oh this man who has all of the privileges continues to have all the privileges and he's saying it in these like funny jokey ways that um that are like the exact <laughs> reasons you'd want to like punch someone in the face but he's also just drawing attention to the fact that that was possible for him he was unapologetic about the fact that he was playing that system um but it really just like leaves these echoes of all of the people that it underserves and how they are having a way worse time and literally killing themselves um, over the fact that they uh, like 
you know, can't talk to their family as much and, and can't get these these right jobs and, and don't have any money for supplies. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of hideous. Chris Atkins does not come out of this book looking good, um, but that's kind of the point of it. He tells all these stories of these people that have it so much worse. He has to have this kind of like levity um, and, and like stick to itiveness um, to be able to like show that contrast with how the prison system is gonna treat him versus the prison system treating like anyone else basically. There's also the element of he's in there for fraud and not even like a very bad fraud. Like he wasn't taking money from individuals. He was taking money from like a slightly dodgy like a public grant system so you kind of he, he like doesn't reckon with the fact that he's done anything wrong really um, and that already sort of like elevates him above all of the other prisoners and he even says it was it's like slightly throwaway and it's something that I think we all know that all of the prisoners look down on the paedophiles because they're the only people that they can just like definitively be like I'm better than you but there is this kind of like whole system in prisons of like the white collar criminals are at the top not only because they have the most resources but also because um they can feel morally superior to all of these other crimes um which is just a very like feeling morally superior in prison is like a very dodgy place to be <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed this video on a bit of a stretch i've just kind of like word vomited all of my thoughts about this book um let me know if you've read it or if i've made you want to read it um and yes i look forward to seeing you in my next video